and we've had some soggy weather through parts of the area today and it's going to really continue off and on overnight tonight before a brief spell of dry weather will finally set in. So if you love snow, that's about the best chance I can give you. It's probably going to come through while you're asleep tonight. So if you don't like the snow, you probably won't even know it happened. Once we do clear out, we're going to cool temperatures down. This weekend is going to be a big, big reality check. We're talking winter temperature. We had a lot of thunder and lightning even a lot of places last night at this time. Overnight, we saw this cloud start to break up early in the morning. And you can even look in our Burlington sky game here, see the clouds clearing, but the flags there changing direction an indication that that front moved through overnight brought the winds in from a different direction. We're going to see a change in the jet stream. So this is the jet stream. These are winds very high in the atmosphere, about 40,000 feet, and it's kind of a steering current for weather systems across the country. So this is going to eventually shift a bit to the north. So we're going to see a lot of these systems kind of taken more to the north versus bringing the rain here to the southeast. We'll start to see some clearing as we approach the lunchtime tomorrow and we'll dry out for our one dry day this work week and we'll see some sunshine hopefully popping out tomorrow afternoon and temperatures will warm a bit as well to be our warmest day of the week. Well, beyond Monday into Tuesday, we'll watch a few clouds build in, but the good news there, we still look to remain dry by Tuesday. So. If you've had the winter blues these last few days, kind of stuck in those soggy cold conditions, the next few days are going to be a treat for you because look at these rain chances. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday all rain free. Even Thursday and Friday when the rain chances return, not overly impressive at this point. And as we plan our day tomorrow, expect chilly conditions in the morning, temperatures hovering around the freezing mark, but the feels like temperatures will be in the mid 20s. So it's going to feel pretty cold tomorrow morning and that will continue throughout the day because we'll have a breeze kick in by the afternoon and although temperatures in the afternoon will be in the 40s, we'll have feels like temperatures in the 30s. So you'll need the jacket as you head out the door through most of your activities tomorrow, especially if you're like me and not a real big fan of the cold. The only showers that we really saw move through the area were in our western counties. Earlier today we had some showers move through Boone and through portions of Wilkes and Ash counties. The triad was dry today looking Throughout North Carolina, much of the state was dry with the exception of the coast. We had some rain showers there and quite a few clouds throughout that part of the state as well. And it kind of shows on the temperatures tonight as well. 41 degrees right now in Greensboro. We're at 45 in Charlotte, but you can see where that blanket of clouds is still this evening. As in the last hour or so, where we are at right now has started to look much different. To kind of give you some perspective on where we are, this is Neely Road behind me in Appomattox. Pleasant Garden Elementary is just off screen. But as you can see, crews are hard at work in a very dramatic shot. Just looking down in between these trucks, there are more than a dozen crews out here working right now. Some crews have come in from out of state to help Duke Energy crews get the lights back on. Chad and Sydney, we are in some of those lulls, if you will. We've had some very heavy rain bands come through here this afternoon. On the drive down from Greensboro, the rain really didn't start getting heavy until we reached Conway, and it got heavier and almost the heaviest once we reached the Myrtle Beach, Surfside, and Garden City area. I've been testing the winds out here in the last little bit, which we are surrounded by hotels, but the winds are still gusting about 15 to 20 miles an hour, even so we're not directly on the beach. Isenis, there is a lot of damage out here in Eden, and the worst part about it right now is it is completely dark through a lot of the city. We're along Bridge Street, about a block or so away from downtown Eden, and behind me, you can't see much, but behind me is the reason that the county and emergency managers sent out that emergency alert earlier this evening. This is a snapped power pole here, and power lines are draped across the road. That's where we begin our coverage with WFMY News 2's Daniel Cruz. Daniel, how are conditions tonight? Chad and Sydney, we are along the Myrtle Beach Boardwalk right now. A very familiar place for folks just on the edge of Peaches Corner. Very recognizable area. And as you can tell, looking behind me right now, things are still looking really good. By and large here in the Myrtle Beach area, we really haven't seen any significant issues today. That, again, continued good news, but we're not out of the clear yet. Take a look at some of this video from earlier today on our drive down here. Significant rains were really the issue at that point. Today is a beautiful beach day. Idalia, way offshore, no longer a problem. Yesterday at this time, a much different story wind and rain was pelting the coast. Our very own Daniel Cruz reporting live in Myrtle Beach. Daniel, it looks like the sunshine is back and shining brightly along the Grand Strand.
Absolutely. It is a beautiful beach day. Just look at all of the blue skies. Barely a cloud behind me this afternoon. Beautiful weather for folks coming into town ahead of the Labor Day weekend. And it's the responsibility for campgrounds, just like Ocean Lakes here, to prepare folks for these type of storms. March 20th, 1998. It's getting very close now and scary. Multiple tornadoes tore through Rockingham County. Well, all of a sudden, the wind started blowing real hard. It's just absolutely devastated. It's just, just wiped us off the map. Including an EF3 tornado, which left an unimaginable path of destruction nearly 12 miles long. I was only nine years old when that storm came through here in Stoneville, and it was one of the first tornadoes I remember seeing in our area. 25 years later, looking through town, it's hard to see that it ever even happened, but the stories tell a different picture. It was rough on this corner here, took out buildings across there. Jeff Webster was working at the Stoneville Post Office that Friday afternoon. He and his co-workers took shelter in the center office. We didn't know what we were going to see when we opened that door. The post office was virtually untouched, but just feet away. The sights we saw were unbelievable. The power lines down, the cars stacked up, bricks, buildings collapsed, all in the street. Uh, never seen that many people in the street and it'd be that quiet. He was not alone. Eric Witten was a parole officer working nearby when the tornado touched down. I saw the tornado coming up, 220. Uh, that literally was like, oh my God, that's a tornado. Both men remember the storm like it was yesterday. Uh, it was a nightmare. You never dreamed you'd see anything like that. Uh, obviously, you see it on TV. You just don't think it's something you're going to see in Stoneville, North Carolina, but we did. The sign was on the back side of town. Former Stoneville Mayor Rex Tuttle rushed back to town after hearing of the storm. He and his wife were in Myrtle Beach. I kind of break down every time I talk about it, you know. It's, uh, it was a sad, sad time. I carried my wife down, her mother's, and I came straight back up here and stayed 24 hours a day for three days. Two people lost their lives that day. Dozens of others were injured. The ones you saw were crying and say, stone is ruined, we'll never build back, it's gone, you know, so it was just a heartbreaking time. Kathy Stanley Galvin is Stoneville's current mayor. She says the scars left behind remind the townspeople to never take a moment for granted. And we're small here. We love everybody. We care for everybody. And when one family or one person hurts, we all hurt. So it was really tough that day. Over time, pictures fade and time heals. But for those who lived through Rockingham County's most powerful tornado, the painful memories will last a lifetime. You always hear about it and you always think it happens everywhere else. You never think of it happening in your own hometown. You still don't forget and forget what all happened that day. And I know many people, it's, it's still a painful memory for many. In Stoneville, Daniel Cruz, WFMY News 2. It was kind of a waiting game. We didn't have a lot popping up in the afternoon. Most of the day was a pretty nice day. And all of a sudden, it got kind of dark. It's a tornado. You see the rain? Right there. It was dark, and it sounded like a, a freight train came through. Family flew off the side of the house. That's when I realized I was in a tornado. I'm just devastated. We lost everything. Not only was it a strong tornado, which we don't get very many of, it was on the ground for so long, 30 plus miles across two counties. That just doesn't happen here very often. It was, like I said, something that we hadn't, in my tenure here, had never experienced. Was help coming? Yes. Was it going to be instantaneous? Probably not. Being uh, in our home, in Greensboro, in our city, um, was taxing. We could be working on one house that was just some minor roof damage and the house next door was completely gone. It was just amazing to see that much devastation up close. Don't seem like it's been five years, but I will tell you, it has been a journey. 
For me, it's the, the biggest event that I've covered in, from a personal standpoint, because not only was it a, a big storm, a big deal, uh, but it went right through our backyard. Praying everybody's gonna be okay, because from in here, we really didn't, couldn't see it until we actually had to leave and go home. I saw two shifts that rarely see each other, except for in passing, Mesh is one. I think it's a traumatizing, traumatizing event. We feel like we've been wandering for the last few years, and actually we have. So we're looking to come home. It was God's will what happened, so we live through it. And we thank God we're still here today. On April 15, 2018, the landscape here in East Greensboro was forever changed. Hi, I'm WFMY News 2's Daniel Cruz. This year marks the fifth anniversary of a destructive tornado that many will never forget. Shortly after 5 p.m. that afternoon, an EF2 tornado touched down near Gate City Boulevard. The storm would track to the north, crossing McConnell Road, Wendover, and Phillips Avenues. The tornado would continue further north through Brown Summit and into Rockingham County. The tornado eventually dissipating just north of the town of Ruffin. Along the path, hundreds of structures were damaged. Some were homes, others were churches and businesses. Three Guilford County schools were destroyed. The district has demolished Peeler Elementary, one of those schools, and a new visual and performing arts magnet school is already under construction. The other two, Hampton Elementary students there, they went to Reedy Fork Elementary. Irwin Montessori students, they have moved to Archer Elementary School. Guilford County Schools now has plans to sell the damaged Hampton and Irwin Montessori properties. Several churches were also damaged by the tornado's 130 plus mile per hour winds just hours after holding their morning worship services. Some of those churches have been demolished, others were rebuilt. And as we cross the five year milestone, Good News Baptist Church on McConnell Road still shows the bruises left behind from that day as they continue to put the pieces of their church back together.